welcome to Sally's Sewing Bee. I'm Sally Thompson and today I'm going to show you what I've done to tailor a men's military jacket, um, a dress uniform jacket, into a ladies fit, stylish, Michael Jackson style jacket. So this is the jacket. I've actually, I did actually start the work before I decided to show this um, online. Um, so some of the work I can't undo, but the rest I've kind of backtracked a little bit. So let me start just by bringing um, my jacket a little bit closer for you to have a look at. Okay. So, um, as you can see, it's got a nice stand-up collar and um, that's got velvet. I mean, this is second-hand. It's been warm. And it has, it does have a little bit of wear on it, um, especially on the cuffs. And I think someone wore it to a party or something because I found some wax on it. So I've had to use brown paper and an iron um, to get that off. But that's fine. Um, I did a few little repairs. The buttons are a little bit loose. Um, but otherwise, it is a rather gorgeous jacket. And I was just lucky because I got this from my local surplus store, um, army surplus store which actually is just a few miles up the road from me. And I, I live in the middle of nowhere, so it's kind of like a really bizarre thing just to have right there. But it's great because it does have a few little hidden gems like this, as well as your normal regular stuff that you get. Um, so the bit that I've already done is the back. This jacket was too big for me. When I put it on in the mirror, all I could see was sort of like a lot of gaping stuff. Um, so that was the bit that I thought, I need to reduce that. So after having looked at myself in the mirror, I thought, right, I'll put this on the dummy and I'm literally just gonna grab it in to get it to fit this dummy. Although this dummy isn't actually exactly my size, actually it's quite a bit smaller than me, but she'll do. So I kind of grabbed it and then I sort of pinned along where I thought, yeah, that's looking quite good. And I just pinned both sides despite the fact that obviously they're not going to match at that point. But what that gave me the opportunity to do was choose which side actually looked better. So then after I pinned it, I put it back on, I had a look in the mirror, and I thought, okay, that side seems to fit better, so I'll choose that one, and that's what I did. So after I had actually chosen the side, I then had to check that I hadn't pinned my out of fabric to the lining of this jacket because that would kind of really uh, mess me up when I come to sewing. So I kind of just gently just pulled it away. There was a certain amount of adhesion because this has got, it's quite structured on the inside, so there was quite a lot of um, backing material, but I, I didn't have to rip it or anything, I just gently pulled it away. Um, so then what I did, using a tape measure, and in fact I also used a bit of a set square as well, after I would got it one exactly how I wanted it, I then kind of measured it, compared it, you know, at various points, I did actually put pins at various points, measured down from the top of the shoulders, to make sure that they were in the same position all the way down. Now, you might not be able to see Okay, but on this jacket, the original um, darts, the tailoring, was done here, just where I'm tracing with my finger. Okay, uh, and there's the seam there. My dart is a completely separate thing, and it's an external dart. I've not wanted to take this jacket apart and change it into something else. I wanted to maintain the structural integrity of this jacket so that if for some reason I wanted to put it back to its original, I could take out all my stitching um, and with a good pressing it would look just like it did before. Um, so this is non-invasive tailoring. It's kind of a bit more, oh, a bit more brutal, no not brutal, it's a bit more sort of, it's, um, it's a bit like, let me describe it this way, you know those trendy restaurants and the ceiling hasn't been filled in, but instead you can see all the pipe work. So it has a real sort of like industrial look. Well, that's what I've done with this. I didn't want to spend hours doing this, and I didn't want to ruin what I consider to be a rather beautiful thing. So that is why I have done it on the outside. It's deliberate. 
I didn't want to hide it or cover it up. In fact, I've even accentuated it by putting a little button just on the bottom here. Okay, so the next thing, after you've obviously sewn that on the machine, that can be a bit tricky. Again, checking that you don't catch your lining in, so you have to be really careful there. I've then got a problem with the sleeves. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Okay, so have a look here. Um, this is a man's jacket. I'm a girl, I'm about a size 10. Um, so it kind of, I can take the shoulders because it takes me back to when padded shoulders were in. Um, but the sleeves, they're quite wide, which is okay, but wide and long looks really, really, really bad. So I, again, wanted to do something that wasn't going to make me have to do something dramatic and take it all apart and move the cuff up and all this kind of stuff. So I've come up with a really good idea, which means, again, that if I wanted to, I could take it out and change it. I'm just going to move the dummy over again. Right. So... Um, I just want to show you, um, first of all I just want to show you um, the, I'm just going to show you the dart, see if you can see that sideways on, I don't know if you can, because it's a black wall here, um, but I'm going to be modelling this later and you'll see. Um, but just while we're there, um, can you see that? It's got an insignia patch, it actually had two, the other one was down here, there's a little bit of a mark there so I shall try and um, press that out. This I'm going to leave. Um, I think I believe that's from the parachute regiment. So um, obviously the person who had this, that was the um, that was what they belonged to. This is a brooch that I've made from the other patch that was on the sleeve. I believe they quote me on this. Uh, this is um, a sergeant's uh, insignia. It's rather lovely. It's kind of all puffy there. It's really nice, it's quite cushiony, and I've used crochet with some beads threaded onto my yarn, and I've backed it and just made it into a brooch. Let's go back to the sleeves. As you can see here, I've put some tailor's tacks. This was how I made my marks, permanent marks, so that until I actually put um, the inside workings of how I'm going to make this sleeve shorter. Basically what I've done, I've used a kind of ruching effect. And if I turn this jacket round, you can see here that I've put tape, it can be any tape, it's just, it's just something that's stiff. And I've pinned it, and then I've ruched it up a bit, pinned it, and ruched up and pinned it. I've done the same on the outside part where it goes around the elbow. This is a lot shorter because that's where I wanted the ruching. This is a bit longer because it works and also I wanted my sleeve just to have a slight sort of inward sort of hang. The other thing that's really important, if you can see this, I've Put the first pins on both sides either level or above the peak of this cuff. I didn't want to affect the shape of this cuff. If I had ruched lower down here it would really make it look messy. I've kept the ruching sort of towards the inside of the elbow and it only comes to just sort of like short of the um, outside of the elbow here. Right. Once you have got this the right thing, so I had to try it on and fiddle about, and I did do it on both sides, and I chose the one I like best, just like I was doing before. I then need to make these marks permanent. Well, permanent until I'm ready to do the next bit. So I put a tailor's tacks in. These tailor's tacks, I did try and go through to the line of the sleeve, just to keep it still. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you don't catch them all, just try and do the best you can. So I've put my tailor's tacks in. What I'm going to do, you're thinking, what is all that about? How are you going to do that? I'm not going to have anything on the outside. I'm going to show you what I've done on the inside. So I'm just going to take this off a minute. So I'm turning the sleeve inside out. Okay. 
Can you see these buttons? Okay, and I've got this tape. This is actually stuff that I use to make my leather handbags. It's a, an iron-on backer. So I've put two pieces together. It just makes it really rigid. And also, it doesn't fray. If you're using tape that when you cut it, it's going to fray, you're going to have to overlock it either by doing a hand blanket stitch or by um, zigzagging on your machine or if you've got an overlocker, great, use that. These buttons correlate to the tailor's tags I've put on the other side. I've attached buttons here, but let me just tell you about this. This button, it is attached to the lining, but I have also put one piece of thread through to the outside, brought it through and then sewn the button on. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. I just want to show you the magic of this. So I'm going to thread that on. Okay, just, just talk amongst yourselves while I fiddle about this. <laughs> this is when you need some background music. Okay, I'm nearly there. Right, um, I'm going to do this one as well. There we go. I could actually have sewn the buttons uh, facing the other way round because they kind of stick up a bit here. And I was going to do that, but I'd already done about three and I'd realised I thought, hmm, really didn't matter that much. If it was more fitted, I would have had to take them off and do them the other way round. But as it's quite a baggy, um, it's quite a big sleeve, doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to turn this through just so you can see how it works. Okay, let me put the jacket back on. Okay. Right. Okay, so we've got a nice, subtle, gentle ruched effect which lifts the cuff up higher for me, just right so that I can wear a nice really long cuff shirt which will show underneath it falling over my hand. Okay, so I just need to go back to telling you about how to fix the outside um, to the inside of the sleeve. Because you think, well, how do you sew it on? It looks really like you know, chicken and egg situation. So what I did is I, off, um, with my tailor's tacks in place, before obviously I put all that on, I got needle and thread and I went inside the sleeve, came up, pulled up the needle, secured it, then I sewed it back through, got the needle and just let pull the needle off the thread so don't double it up and knot it just have it needs to be single thread and I did that for every single one of these so there are six buttons on each sleeve yeah so it did take a little bit of time but once you've done that all you have to do is make your little tape pieces so these are my tape pieces yeah so with the little button holes yeah um, and that's the little one and this one it's not totally exactly the same all the way down. The top one is closer to the next one. And you can have a look here. So this one, you can't really see it on here. <laughs> but um, when I measured it, it, it was. I think this one I just did just to show you. So I did it really accurately before. So this is one I did earlier, but not as well as the original one I did. So this is my Michael Jackson jacket. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this and I've really enjoyed sharing it with you. The next thing of course will be for you to see me in it. So I will take um, some pictures and I'll be putting those on Facebook. If there's any part of this process that you think, oh, I really missed that, I really didn't get that, or you really didn't explain that very well, Sally, please uh, put a post on my Facebook page and I'll get back to you. Alternatively, you can email me on sallyaintnosaint at gmail.com and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So this is one of many videos. I'm um, hoping to do lots more with lots of other things 
uh, to show you, to share with you. See you next time. Bye.